And surprisingly, people come for months at a time to stay near Disney. Oh, interesting. So there are a lot of Disney freaks out there. Okay. Hey everyone, Travis Spear with Pine Financial Group. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel today. Please be sure to hit subscribe and leave comments below so that we can interact with each other and you can see the new content that we're putting out weekly. Joined here today with Ziana McIntyre, who's an expert at Airbnb. And today we're gonna to talk about four ways to choose a location for a profitable Airbnb. So a lot of times when you think about Airbnb, you might think of some of the more obvious choices, maybe near a beach or in a resort town or near the mountains for skiing. But sometimes those markets can be difficult because they're already so desirable that the pricing to enter that market could be too high. So in uh, talking with Ziano, there's some other opportunities that may be overlooked in choosing an Airbnb property. So let's go through those. Yeah, so the first one I would say is near hospitals. So people don't really know this, but a lot of nurses and doctors, they do three month terms at different hospitals. And so they come in, they're paying more than a long-term person, but maybe a little bit less than a typical Airbnb guest, but they're really great because they're barely home. They're always at the okay. hospital working. So it ends up being a great thing. And sometimes there are places like here in Denver where they have a whole network of hospitals in one area. And so they might have six or so. And so if you've got a condo in that kind of place, you're gonna be in a really good spot. Okay, do you see opportunities there for uh, families maybe that are coming, not just the professionals, but also families for somebody's in a longer term stay? Yeah, so um, you may not get them for longer term, but I do have a lot of families come in for my places that are near hospitals when they're just coming to have some sort of procedure. Okay. So they might live a little bit further away and they're staying for a few days while they're healing or getting okay. some treatment. So when we you talk about hospitals, is there a certain proximity that makes more sense than others? I mean, should it be within a short drive or within public transit or within walking distance? What's typical? Yeah, that's interesting. I don't think it matters that much. I think the closer the better. So okay. if you're within 10 minutes of driving, it's probably like more obvious that they would look in that area. Okay, cool. Yeah. And what other opportunities are there? Yeah, so universities is a big one that I talk about, and that's kind of how I got my start. I live in Boulder, Colorado, which has a huge school. It's about 40,000 students. And so we just get tons of events, traveling teachers, professors, um, families that are coming in to visit their students. So we really get a lot of traffic with a school, and I think that that's true pretty much in any market that has a big enough school. So I would say something about 15,000 students or more would be a good tipping point. Okay, and so does how does that work maybe from a seasonality standpoint? If schools from roughly August to May, do you still get good action in the summer months in these type of places? So generally summer is the time that people are busy everywhere. Unless you've got a ski place or something like that, um, maybe in Mexico or something, they're not as busy. But in the United States, pretty much across the board, summer is the busiest time. It's when the kids are out of school. It's when people generally travel. So you can kind of count that summer is always gonna be good and okay. it's trying to figure out why are people coming in the rest of the year? Okay, great, so, so we have hospitals and universities. What are some other opportunities? Yeah, so convention centers are actually really good. Sometimes it's tricky because they're where they're located, they might be in a downtown area sure. or something, but convention centers and ballparks end up bringing in a lot of people for games, especially if you've got something like baseball where there's a quite a long season there and a lot of games going on, okay. it can be a great thing. And there's usually ballparks within a close distance of themselves. And so okay. you might have football and then you'll have baseball kind of nearby. Okay. So I find that that actually attracts a lot of people. Okay, so as I picture yeah. uh, we're you know, in Denver, uh, the convention center and baseball stadium are both downtown. So uh, kind of goes to that piece of the real estate being difficult to purchase because it's typically really expensive. So I Can guess be. maybe back to the proximity question, keeping in mind Uber and Lyft and even the little scooters are available now, right? Uh, so from a proximity to said location, is there a point that works better than others? Yeah, so with those, I think walkability really helps. Sure. And so yes, in downtown, you do see a lot of that. People are always kind of walking in and it's hard to get there. So if you've got something that is right on public transport, that really works. Okay. Um, but I just think in general, having to drive and then park is kind of a pain. Okay, so, so. walkability is great, but would stumble ability be even better? <laughs> Maybe. Okay. okay. I don't know. It sounds like you might be a stumbler. <laughs> Maybe you could tell us. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and so that we have those three, and what do you think is a, uh, one of the last opportunities? So the last one I would say are the big theme parks. And a lot of people have been hearing about and talking about um, Kissimmee in Florida and places like that that have the big Disney parks, the all of the roller coaster rides and everything like that. It 
draws in a huge amount of people. And surprisingly, people come for months at a time to stay near Disney. Oh, interesting. So there are a lot of Disney freaks out there. Okay. So <laughs> in, that, in that space, like I think about Orlando, uh, you know, with the Disney thing, and the real estate's typically less expensive than other markets. So yeah. maybe a good opportunity to get in, but what about competition in a place like that? Is there a lot of uh, short-term rentals out there which might drive down your nightly rate? Yes, so I'm actually looking to buy a place in Orlando right now, so this is really relevant. The home is really inexpensive. It's only like 365 and it's a six bedroom house with a oh, wow. pool and everything. So in Colorado, that just does not exist. Sure. But the nightly rate is quite low. So you're looking at like maybe 150 a night. So if you're looking at how many people you can fit in a house like that, they could be paying like 10 or 12 bucks a night. Yeah. And okay. so the quality of guests you get is something that you sort of have to think about. Interesting. I guess yeah. what, as we all think back to when we were young and p booking a hotel room or whatever and breaking it down per head, you try to yeah. get as many people as you can, right? And that might exactly. be a little rougher on the property. It is rougher on the property, but you still come out ahead. It seems like the numbers are really good. Okay. So yes, I mean, you talked about competition. This home is like five minutes from Disney. I don't think anything like 30 minutes or more would still apply. Okay, very yeah. good. Well, cool. Well, although uh, Airbnb is real estate, the rules are a little different. It's all about location, 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 and location. Thanks for joining us today.